Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm in the University of Cambridge Botanical Gardens looking at the glass houses. Let's get straight into it. Okay, I'm in University of Cambridge Botanical Gardens. Before we head, head into the glass houses, which are the best part for me, of course, um, I wanted to look at these glass house bays. So they have, I think, six or seven bays outside between the glass houses, sheltered and south facing. And um, after the winter that we've had, be interesting to see how a botanical garden such as Cambridge has fared. Straight away, have a look at their echiums. Completely obliterated. Here's their Euphorbia mellifera, honey spurge. Looking very dead, I have to say. The general consensus has been, has been that these euphorbias are um, semi-hardy. I mean, look at the woody growth on this. I wonder if it will shoot back. I've only got a young plant in my, in my uh, garden. But that's interesting. Huge trachycarpus. Plenty of seeds on. Okay, the mustard bash is looking very dead. Interesting that they don't offer any protection. Uh, nothing's wrapped up, no fleecing, no straw, just left with elements. There, as you can see here, a little bit of life in one of the stems. Of course, they'll grow back from the, from the roots anyway. And there's a T-Rex here as well, Tetrapanax. Another Tetrapanax over here. A little grove of them. Again, interesting to see. Yeah, pretty solid on the stem. Should be fine. No signs of growth. I have seen a few people online showing the new growth coming, but these do look a little bit dead on the stems. Let's have a little look down this next bay. I think this has Saracenia in it. The picture plant, it does. I mean, they're alive. Is that a water soldier? Maybe not too hot on um, aquatic plants. Interesting. Yeah, it, the car said it was about 13 degrees uh, today, but I definitely, it definitely feels warmer, but maybe that's because I'm having a south facing uh, bay between glass houses. Okay, aloe polyphylla. Anyone growing these in their garden? Covered up, but they are. I can see some signs of life on there with a bit of hessian on. Okay, this is an interesting one. Look at this arid bay here. The yucca filamentosa. Now, there's the uh, what I assume is a agave americana, and it's under this um, plastic sheeting, so I can see. I mean, it's it's cordoned off, but I can see there the agave americana looking worse for wear undercover in a sheltered you know Cambridge is a pretty uh, a mild part of the country there's some Apuntia back there as well maybe, maybe Apuntia Englemani not sure Yucca Rostrata possibly the Yucca experts will tell me there you go that's the Arid Bay okay here's a nice one a nice well, let me pine. Is it multi stemmed? No, it looks like a single plant. Pine cones on. I think these cones are, I think it's a male plant. It's fantastic, actually. You can see, I think these have got a, a hardy down to minus 10. Possibly. Um, the good thing about the Cambridge University of Botanical Gardens is it's got a searchable and extensive online database of plants. Um, and it tells me that there are three of these somewhere. Two in containers and one in the ground. This one's the one in the ground looking great. I mean, it's looking alive, but interesting that it's taken some damage. Yeah, that's the same now this seems to be the New Zealand or Australian bed. There's a grove of um, 
Big Sony Antarctica. Got a mixture. Got a double trunk one there with no protection. And then we've got some here with a little bit of fleece on. Apologies about the wind, by the way, if you can't hear me. It's interesting, just looking there, there's absolutely no protection on there. You know, it feels alive. Can't see any knuckles coming through. I wonder if we've got any other um, tree ferns, and I wonder why they've wrapped some, but not, not others. It's interesting. There we go. Anyway, we're going to head into the, the glass houses. These are just the best bits. I've not been here for about 15 or 16 years, but even before I was into plants um, and gardening, these glass houses were just incredible. Um, they have different uh, climates in there. And my favourite one before we head in is the, uh, the island plants, the island flora um, glass house, which is just filled with incredible plants anyway we'll head in okay this is the um, arid lands greenhouse what we've got there agave parii looking really nice look how glaucous it is love this one agave victoria regina <clears throat> basilarian a few Aquino cactus, barrel cactus there, cacti. What's that happened to you? Snow, Steno patella. The database didn't actually say they had, did it? Oh no, it did. It did say they had well witch here, but look at that. Two well witch here. I think this one's uh, flowered previously. I wonder if they're growing in pure sand. I love this plant. I see a lot of North American growers growing this in pots. I won't even attempt to pronounce it. Bromeliads. I think these are bromeliads flowering. Don't know a lot about them. So this is a tropical wetlands um, glass house. Plenty of things flowering. It's absolutely roasting in here. It must be 30 degrees plus in here. Look at the size of these. Pachypodium on either side of the walkway, absolutely huge. This is the tropical rainforest house. I have to say, I don't recognize a lot of these botanic names. I assume a lot of them are house plants.
There's a banana plant I've never heard of before. Musa, acuminata, microcarpa. What does microcarpa mean? Small flowers. Anyway, it's a huge, slender stem. This is a tall central glass house. Got leaves on that. Ah, oh, there's one of the moon flowers. Oh, there it is. That's a moonflower that bloomed. And the website said there's only 16 botanical gardens in the world with a moonflower. Very cool. <laughs> Zoom out a little bit. Flowering jade vine. This is interesting. I think that's uh, indoors tetrapanax for some reason. Doing well. Evergreen in here, of course. Philodendron, philodendron, flowering. Huge trunks on that. This is another glass house entitled um, Tropical Rainforests. What, what I particularly like when I come to botanical gardens is this, these kind of labels, Caladium species. This fills me with uh, confidence that I'm not the only one who can't identify plants. If um, people working here are not sure on what type of plant we're looking at. Again, my begonias. Now that's interesting, Pitcairnia. Something or other. I was assuming it was coming from the Pitcairn Islands, but I suppose not. Hedicheums, Barbagonias. Really hot in here. Mind your head. Dwarf Cavendish, so a very dwarf. That must be an offset, surely. There must have surely been a bigger um, plant there, but it must have flowered. Heading in, headed into the mountains now. Interesting to see some cacti and succulents in the uh, mountain plants. Mammillaria, Rubutia, Dudleya. Cyclamen in flower, Primula. Yeah, plenty of flowering in the mountain house. Yeah, just spotted this tree fern outside the Ocean Islands glass house. 
Um, it's from a, I, I thought it was a Cyathea, but it's a Speropterus uh, cooperi, but it's from the Cyathea family. Look at the colour, look at the golden colour. And the fronds. Never heard of that one before. Drop a comment if you have. Uh, the name of this glass house is Continents Apart. I think the star of the show here is this um, Alu Ferox, this tree alo. Look at I mean, look at the size of that. This is something you can only dream of growing outside in the UK. I see a lot of them in North American growers' gardens where the climate suits, but this is awesome. One of my favourite plants, I would say. Absolute beasts. Yeah, I think the point of this uh, glass house is to show um, convergent evolution in plants from different continents. So you've got your Australian plants, it looks like, on this side, and I assume your African plants there, seeing as we've got aloe ferox. Just awesome, awesome. Shout out to the architecture as well. Look at the huge glass houses. Paradise flower in there. I spotted this one. I assume it's a New Caledonian pine. I found another wallaby pine. This one looks like it's in a less sheltered spot because it's looking a little bit less healthy than the other one after the winter, I mean, look at the colour of the leaves. What do you think? Anyone else love this natural look on the track is where they leave the dead front on? I mean, look at this one, this is a huge track here. I love the look of the dead fronds. Yeah, this is my favourite glass house. It's called Oceanic Islands and it's showing you um, Canary Islands flora. I always find it fascinating how seeds manage to travel across oceans and colonise uh, volcanic islands. And um, we've got a lot of nice looking things in here like uh, Sontius. I was going to say Sontius canariensis, but it's not. I mean, uh, look at these dandelion like flowers. Awesome. A lot of Sontius, a lot of Aeonium, Canary Island palm. Yeah, it's about, it's definitely 40 degrees in here. This is interesting. Euphorbia canariensis. Euphoria, Euphorbia regis trubea. Yeah, I love these sonchus. I'm growing a few sonchus from seed uh, this year, so we'll see how they do. I think I got sonchus parmensis, maybe. Some seed heads up there, look.
Lol. I found this bonus house around the back. I almost missed this, the Fern House. Listen, anything that's from New Caledonia is a special plant. Cyathea cooperi. For me, these just beat Dixonia Antarctica hands down. Look how Jurassic and weird they look. Look at that, how furry they are. Love Cyathea. <clears throat> Adiantum ready for me, apparently. A lovely looking Dixonia there, that dichotomized, two trunked. Really cool. Ah, lovely as well. Dixonia squarosa. They just look awesome. I think the squarosa and the Cyathea cooperi I just, I love their, the fronds, they're so upright. A lot quicker growing than the Dixonia Antarctica. Each to their own though. Staghorn fern. Yeah, there is so much to see. Little secret corners that you wouldn't otherwise notice. I mean, look at this. A peacock fern. I've come outside into this rockery slash alpine area. Spotted a few really interesting things. Um, an agave chrysantha just under there. Look at this little um, winter protection. Seems to be doing okay. And in contrast, the agave americana is definitely a bit in the dust. They've got it listed as an agave americana marginata marginata. <clears throat> Maybe it's a variegata. I don't know, but it's definitely dead. There's a few more agaves. And there's an Apuntia. Look at this Apuntia, let me zoom in so I can see the label. Apuntia Plecantha, Fecantha, the brown spined prickly pear from North America. Now this has got zero protection. So that's interesting, definitely one I'm going to look up when I get home for my own arid bed. Agave parii, subspecies Neo-Mexicana, doing well. Here's an agave chrysantha. Looks to have survived. There's a couple of agave shotty, shot eye, which is definitely this one here, and there's one there, both dead. There's a few more agaves just over there as well. This small one here, right, well, here we are, that's alive, but the big one at the back is definitely dead. There's a very healthy looking yucca bacata, Spanish bayonet.
not long until the gunners wake up. That's it from Cambridge University Botanical Gardens. If you enjoyed the content, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing and liking the video. Until next time, bye.